Hello students, let us review the mechanism tutorial question 1. Okay, so if you take a look at 1a, you will notice that the configuration of the chiral center is inverted. How do we know? Okay, so the first thing is, uh, this is the substituent, uh, BR, um, of the reactants, and then the substituent at the products is the epoxy group or OET groups. Okay, then if you take a look at the chiral center, you notice that the methyl group and the H swap in positions. Yeah, so this is uh, clearly an indication that uh, an inversion of stereochemistry occurs. Yeah, it will not be uh, wise to simply look at the RS configuration. The reason being the RS configuration uh, do change um, depending on the nature of how you assign the priority to the substituents. Okay, so it is possible that uh, even though there is an inversion of stereochemistry, the way you name the chiral center, it could go from R to R instead of R to S or S to R. Yeah, so looking at the RS configuration alone um, might not be a good indication uh, to see whether there's an inversion. So the best way to look at inversion is to place the chiral center uh, side by side and then the rest of the groups in place and then you see whether there's a swap in um, two of the key groups um, which you are comfortable in looking at. Yeah, so with all this in place, uh, now let us attempt to draw the mechanism because we, it's quite clear that there is an inversion of stereochemistry. Okay, so that so therefore the first thing we can conclude is that 1A undergoes SN2. Okay, we must be very clear about this. Okay, it undergoes SN2. So if it undergoes SN2, so that means that the O ethyl group, right, will approach from the rear of the CBR bond. Okay, so you need to draw it from the rear and then uh, in the process, the bond breaks towards the BR. Okay, so if you want to draw in the transition states, um, it should be drawn clearly. So in this case, the transition state should be drawn like this. Okay, so uh, you can just follow whatever you are given. You do not need to um, rotate anything or change anything. Okay, so remember to put in a dotted line, dot, 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 BR, and then um, dot, 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 um, OET. Okay, so something like this, I think it's okay. Of course, if you are very strict about it, then um, obviously you might want to rotate the uh, ester group away from the incoming nucleophile. But I think it is fine for now because the emphasis of this question uh, is not so much on uh, the the drawing of the mechanism alone, but uh, the drawing of mechanism coupled with an explanation um, why do you get certain product? I think that, that is the main focus of the question. Yeah. Then um, after that, you you would notice that um, after drawing the mechanism, your product would look like this. Okay, so you have an ester group, and then um, so because there's an inversion, so the methyl group will be pointing downwards, and then the H will be projecting away from you, and then um, of course the OET group is here. Yeah, you notice that uh, what I've drawn here in green, right, is a little bit different from uh, what was given to me here. Yeah, but you can easily convert them because they are identical by simply doing a bond rotation. Okay, um, that should be a bond rotation of 180 degrees. Lah. Yeah, then the group, the metal group that's pointing towards you will now be pointing away from you. The edge that's pointing away from you will now be pointing uh, towards you. Yeah, so this is purely an SN2 mechanism. So I hope uh, it's clear from the explanation. Next, we'll move on to 1B. Okay, so for 1B, right, um, again, what you have is uh, something similar. Okay, so uh, in terms of the chiral center, it looks the same, except that there is a little change. The substituent now is now um, an OET group, an OETL group. Okay, then you notice that uh, in the course of the reaction, there's a retention of uh, the chiral center and then there's an inversion as well. Okay, so how can we make sense out of this? Yeah, and of course from here you get 50-50% mix. Uh, so therefore you should roughly have an idea that uh, the reaction simply undergoes an SN1 mechanism. Okay, so this should be an SN1. Yeah, so one of the uh, mistake that most of the students make when they drew this uh, mechanism is they simply just let the uh, CBR bond break. 
work. And then um, they simply work with this particular carbocation, um, which uh, looks like this. Okay, so the H is projecting in and then the methyl group is projecting out towards uh, you and then with a plus charge. Now do take note that this particular carbocation is not stable because it is bonded directly to a highly electronegative oxygen atom. Yeah, and um, at the same time, the carbon has only six electrons around it. So the highly electron deficient uh, carbocationic center, if it's bonded to a uh, to an electro uh, negative uh, atom, it's definitely uh, not going to be the most stable form. So you shouldn't be drawing this form. Instead, you should be drawing the resonance form. So the lone pair uh, will actually delocalized and then form a pi bond uh, over here. And then now the oxygen will take on the positive former charge or the plus one charge. And then um, you form something like this, okay? Uh, regardless of whether you are looking at the structure on the left, the resonance structures on the left or the resonance structure on the right, uh, the geometry around the carbon center is trigonal planar. Yeah, so because of this, uh, I think you can easily continue the mechanism. If the O methyl group uh, approaches from the top plane, um, uh, so you have to draw in from the top plane and then the pi bond will break towards the oxygen to neutralize the charge. Or you can draw it approaching from the bottom plane as well. I think you have to draw both in. Okay, so attacking from here and then now the pi bomb breaks towards the oxygen. Yeah, so you have to draw both the top and bottom attack. Okay, and um, in the process, you should draw out the structure. So uh, in this case, the carbon uh, now uh, projecting upwards. Then the Me is here, and then uh, the O methyl group is here. Okay, and then uh, for the tops, it's like this. Uh, you guys should be quite familiar with this. It's not something that is uh, very new to you because you have seen it, I think, a few times. Number one is uh, in electrophilic addition, uh, where if your carbocation is bonded to three different groups, then the nucleophile can approach it from the top and bottom plane with near equal probability. And then that will be the same instance when you look at it from the SN1 mechanism. Yeah, so in our case here, it is still an SN1 mechanism. The only difference is that now the carbocation um, will take on a more stable form, which is this particular form. Why is this the more stable form? Because all the atom, of course, except the H, has the octet configuration. Yeah, so again, whenever stabilization is possible, it will prefer to be stabilized. Yeah, then, um, so after a while, if you are more experienced, when you have, when you are looking at a system like this, right, then you are probably going to draw the mechanism straight away by uh, pushing out the BR by forming the CO pi bond like this. Okay, so when you are more experienced, you can draw what I have drawn in red. Yeah, because you know that the presence uh, of a highly electronegative oxygen or even nitrogen, right, will allow uh, the pi bond to be formed between carbon and oxygen and in the process, uh, kick out a good living group. Yeah, so the good living group in this case is uh, bromide. Yeah, then um, if we move on to part C, okay, um, it's a bit interesting here for part C. Yeah. So you notice that um, if you if it, if you just take a look at the substituent, right? So it's Br here, and then um, I have a OH minus nucleophile. Yeah. So now the OH minus nucleophile is uh being substituted in place of Br. So from here, it seems to imply that it seems to imply. Uh, I'm not saying that this is the correct mechanism. Okay. So it seems to imply that uh. The OH minus group seems to come from the front. Okay. And then you kick out like that. But you know that this is impossible because based on the mechanism you have learned, regardless of whether is it SN2 or SN1, yeah, you know that mechanism are orbital control. So for SN2, we stress to you that it must be a real attack. And then in this case, it can't be SN1 because if it's SN1, it will not be 100% of one um, sterile isomer. Yeah, so you know that if you have drawn something like this, then it's incorrect. Yeah, so if it's incorrect, then you need to uh, probably modify your mechanism a little bit. Yeah, not to draw the one I've just drawn. Okay, then um, you also notice that I have a unique group here, which is a thio. Okay, so if you if you, if you you go check up 
um, on your thio, right? You notice that the thio group is pretty acidic. Okay, so uh, in this case, if I have an OH minus, the first thing that could probably happen to my thio group, right, is that it will be deprotonated. Okay, so I'm going to just draw it in first. Yeah, so the OH minus uh, will probably deprotonate my thio first. Okay, to give me the thiolates. Okay, so the thiolate will now have a negative charge, uh, which allows what we call an internal nucleophilic substitution to take place. Okay, which looks like this. And then in the process, it will produce a three-membered ring, which is highly strained. Then the highly strained three-membered ring, right, will of course encourage a nucleophilic attack uh, by the OH minus, by the hydroxide nucleophile, from the rear of the, of the CS bond like this. Okay, and then it will break towards the S. Yeah, so whenever you show a uh, mechanism, right, it will be good if you can show it um, as close to the actual mechanism as possible. So in this case, the rear attack uh, from behind the CS bond. Okay, and then in the process, uh, what I'm going to get is a ring opening uh, process. So the ring will open. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to get an OH here. Okay, and then of course the... Uh, the sulfur okay will be over here with a negative charged yeah then um because of the deprotonation earlier on yeah so uh there's this uh deprotonation right yeah so the lone pairs on the sulfur can now grab a protonic hydrogen from water and then regenerate the oh minus and then um, i'm going to get the products yeah something like this yeah uh, some of the students might ask, uh, what if I am not aware that thio is more acidic than an alcohol and it can be deprotonated by hydroxide? So what can I do? Yeah, so that is not a problem at all. Uh, if you didn't know of this particular fact, uh, you can simply just perform an internal SN2. So let me just show you very briefly. So it is perfectly fine if you just uh, attack directly like this. Yeah, and then after that, uh, the OH minus will then grab the uh, H bonded to the sulfur. Yeah, because uh, if it undergoes the reaction like this, right? So it is uh, likely that uh, my sulfur will have a plus one formal charge uh, due to the hydrogen. So it will be like the conjugate base, sorry, conjugate acid. Yeah, so this H can be easily deprotonated. Okay, so... Uh, you don't have to, you don't really need to worry. Uh, again, as I often mention, uh, your job is not to draw the most uh, correct mechanism. Yeah, but uh, you should be proposing the most likely uh, mechanism uh, in the reaction or in the reaction scheme uh, you are being asked to draw. Okay, yeah, so uh, with that, we are done with question one. I